All right, you folks, back on the Sean Walker show with my man, Sean Walker, Allen Head Men's Basketball Coach. You're doing big things, brother Sean, man. Good to see you, man. How you doing this morning, my brother? Doing well, doing well. Always good to be seen. How about yourself? I'm doing great. My brother's heading towards March Madness, the birthday month. So uh, just trying to make it do what I do, my brother. I know that's right. This is uh, this is uh, exciting time of the year, man. We're headed into March Madness. You know, some conference tournaments already going on and we're getting, getting ready for ours, and then we're getting ready for the big boy on TV. So I'm looking forward to uh, what March has to bring. Man, no doubt, man. And bro, it's just crazy how it's already February 27th, man. Like, this, this year, the office is flying on by us already. That's right. Well, it doesn't take long, man. Life life, and time waits for nobody. Man, you got there right now, Sean. You had a heck of a last stretch here, uh, Miles. Morehouse and South Carolina back to back to back, two on the road, two at home. But I start with the Miles game. I mean, you guys jumped them pretty good in that first half, man. Uh, overall, had a thirty-six percent shooting, and then it's kind of you know what we talked about all year long, man. Trying to maintain that consistency, the one got you the lead and hold on to that lead, man, and then kind of just slip away from you on the road there, Miles. Another one of these games, man, where, you know, we came out. I was under the weather before the game started. I don't know, I had a bug jumped on me or something. And I actually started not even get off the bus and coach the game. Uh, decided to go in and coach and sat down for the most part of the, of, of the first half. And I didn't even know what team we had, had to show up, man. We were up 25 to, to 5, up 20 points in the first half. And Miles is um, obviously – the number one team in the West. They are 21 and five now. This is the end of the year. Big time team. And uh up up 14 and a half, up three points with 21 seconds on the clock. And uh we made a mistake, gave up a three, going to overtime and get beat. So um this is um another heartbreaking loss that we have to a team that we could have really made a statement on, but you know what I say to our players and say to people all the time, win, winning teams make winning plays. They know why they win. All right. They, they're never out of games. And uh, teams that are not as successful figure out a way to make a mistake and get beat. And so uh, that's the difference between 21 and 5 and 14 and 14. No doubt. And I, and I noticed the major upset, Sean, is like the second half of overtime free throws. 19 or 21 in the second half of overtime. And I know you popped on it, not the five all the fouling, too much fouling going on. I know that just bug, burns your soul as you sit there and watch the second half of seeing your guys foul too much. Yeah, part, part of, you know, that fouling the way we do is it's an IQ issue. You know, we, we're we're moving behind the ball. We're, we're not responding the way we need to be. Obviously, you foul a lot of times with the secondary defender, which means we're not staying in front of the ball, doing the things we need to do. Um, you know, we just we just have some fundamental issues that we that we that we have a difficult time overcoming, um, and they they're they're super exposed when you play uh, against top teams in the country, uh, which is what Miles Morehouse Clark and and Benedict are. We 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 have a, you have a difficult time overcoming that when the talent gap is uh, is is definitely a, a obvious one. And and, and and Sean, I know uh, Clark Atlanta is a home game. Similar situation, up six six at halftime, made seven threes in the first half. Uh, up, by, uh, they, you know what I'm saying? And I know this like you say, can we just close this game out? You yeah. say, have come out again, um, fouling a lot in the second half, giving them eighteen or nineteen free throws um, for the second half there against Clark. Yeah, so this Clark Atlanta game was is is just an interesting game, and we were actually up thirty to twenty two with a minute and fourteen seconds left to go in the half. And we had an epic fall in that minute and 14 seconds and gave up, made three turnovers, um, missed an uncontested layup, didn't catch the ball, gave them three uncontested layups, went into the half up two, actually. And we, you know, we uh oh man, we just fall apart, man. Like, you know, we 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 miss so many opportunities when we're up. And leave so many points on the board when we're up. Makes leave so many positive plays, um, you know, through the rubbish, throwing times that we are playing well. 
you know, good teams are going to surge. Good teams are going to come back. Good teams are going to going to going to attack. Um, and so we have a very difficult time with regaining momentum. Um, they punished us in the second half. Um, you know, the free throw shooting was twenty seven eight. Uh, we went eight times. They went twenty seven times. But that was a physical game. I can't say that we didn't foul. I, I just I was a little concerned with the fact that it didn't seem like clock fouled. But uh, you know, here is another game. There's 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 not a game that we uh, were not uh, in this in this last four games that we did not have a lead. Um, and um, you know, we have to figure out how to be good enough to keep it. No doubt, Sean. Like you said, man. Like you on those runs, man. Those 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 shots that the fans don't really understand. Like those open shots that don't go and could make a thirteen point lead, sixteen, or you know, you go on a, a fast break and you. Layup, you miss layup or something like that. All those little small plays that fans don't really understand or see, like we would not see, make a difference between winning and losing. You can stretch a lead out to 18 at that point. All that stuff matters. And I know fans don't really see it the way we you and I do, but those really small things could make leagues expand matter to winning games too. We have a systemic problem of doing just that. So, you know, I'm I'm spending a lot of time watching film of just those moments, right? And uh, you know, unfortunately for us, man, like sometimes we can resent what uh, is good for us, right? That's the message that we can we can we can find success even in our lives as adults, but because we don't like the way the success comes, we fight against it. All right. And so we can find and in, in, with this team that I have, of, of, and it's very clear cut um, what we do to get leads, how we connect ourselves to play together and uh, excuse me, a band together for, to get a lead. And, um, we do just the opposite to lose a lead. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm finding uh that very difficult to swallow, you know, um, and we're talking about, talking about playing selfless and um, not watching the score, just doing the things that we need to do. And we need to do things particularly as we play at the top of the league, as I'm calling it, that are not talent oriented, right? We, we're not going to have more good players than Benedict or more good players uh, than, than, than Clark or, or Morehouse or Miles. It's not that we don't have good players, um, it's just that our our good players need to do what, what they do individually that may not be as much as the mass of players that these people have, that, you know, that these other schools have. And uh, we're not doing a good job of uh, being able to maintain our our, our, our our mental focus to stick to the script. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we go back now with 14 and 14 at the end of the year. And I'm telling you, we have given away <laughs> – five, six games, or and there's been several more other games that we certainly uh, probably should have won that um, that we didn't. So um, it's tournament time now, which is a great opportunity for us to start over and see uh, if we can clean up some of the things that we have uh, not done well and see if we can shock the world. No doubt, Sean. And what I will say is a positive. <laughs> I, know, I know in the moment it sucks, but against the top four teams in the league, you actually you all had leads. You, you, we, 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 you've shown that, hey, if we play the right way, move the cheese the right way, right. we can we can stay in these games. We do what we do the right way. Just plan the right way. You know, it works. And I think get, using this next 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 week to, to reset and refocus to help these young men see that, hey, if we do things the right way, we can compete with these top teams in the SIAC. Yeah, we've had – Four games this year that we've got beat double fig, double digit. So uh, Morehouse, Morehouse beat us double digits last night after we were up eight or nine in the first half. Clark beat us double digits twice. Benedict beat us double digits. And then I think Spring Hill may have beat us 10, but that was a close game. But we've been in every game, even in some of these games that we lost double digits, that we were we we have led relatively comfortably. Um so we know that we can play with anybody. Um, we have got to figure out how we can play with anybody for the for the entire forty minutes. Uh, 
And, and you know, the, 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 the unique part for us is the games that we play against teams that are not at, supposedly at the top of the league, those our games are equally as difficult, right? Like we are just as close to the bottom as we are the top. It's kind of a good place to be because we we have to focus all the time to be whoever we are. And, um, you know, when we win, we seem to figure it out a little bit. When we lose, it seems to look a little bit ugly, like bad news bads, I tell our guys. Uh, but, um, you know, at least we know exactly where we are. We know, we know that we will have uh, moments in games where we won't play as well. And now from a coaching standpoint, we have to, you know, motivate, edify, and, and challenge people to to get back on track so that we can be uh, a formidable opponent. And Sean, how do you approach it this week, knowing you're gonna play the next Tuesday in Savannah? So how do you kind of balance rest versus rust and keeping the guys, some guy who nicked up, give them a little healthier, but also prepare for the opponents you don't really know yet, or is you know who you don't really get on Tuesday night in game number nine there? Yeah. So that's a good question because at this time of the year, you know, listen, we're not going to reinvent the wheel now. Um, we we played 28 games. Uh, everybody's going to do about what they've been doing and try to fine tune it. Uh, our bodies and our rest is, is at a premium right now. Today, obviously, we're going to be off. We played last night. Uh, we're going to take off tomorrow, <clears throat> and we're going to take off Thursday. Thursday, actually, we're going to come in and have a uh, – uh, a voluntary workout day with assistant coaches or whatever the case may be um, so that we can kind of get out of mind. We, 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 we're at this point in time of the year where we all need to get away from each other as well, right? We've lost three games back to back, on uh, to back. They were all games that we could have won. We didn't win. I'm irritated. Players are irritated. You know, everybody's irritated right now. So, um, and 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 it should be exactly like that. We should be miserable because we're not winning. Um, and so, I am uh, totally embracing uh, where we are. So, we're we're at a cross section where we take these three days off. We'll come back Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and go as hard as we can. Get on the bus on Tuesday. Find out who our opponent is Monday night, and. Um, and go down there and try to play one game at a time and and and, and win us and move on. No doubt, that's a hell of a plan, there, my brothers. All you can do, and I I know uh, I know it's just we for you know say it's Bucci senior night at Murray State, man. And uh, tell me about that, man. How this is career comes to an end? How happy you are of him? While uh, pushing through a hard year himself, knowing it is it is his senior night and. And he, he did live his dream, man. He's gonna get a master's degree out of this too, as well. So I have yeah. you as a father, man. Uh, just seeing what you is important to your son, seeing him actually do what you what you what you put into him to do. Yeah. So yeah, tomorrow night, well, tomorrow to, tomorrow morning, I'm flying uh to to Nashville, and my parents are going, which is a blessing in itself. My, my dad just turned seventy nine. My mother's seventy eight or seventy seven. She'll turn seventy eight in uh in June, and. Uh, it's a blessing to have them to be able to go over with us. His, his mother and his family, his mother's side of his family, her family's going. So it's going to be a big group of us to go and celebrate him. Uh, this is certainly a day of distinguishment uh, for him. Um, uh, five years. I mean, I, I'm about happy as old, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love watching him play, but, you know, he's had a career of, of many ups and many downs, which is exactly what a college basketball career is supposed to be in terms of, uh, generating life uh, experiences that he will be able to take forward with him. Um, you know, again, he's going to leave school without having a bill or debt. Um, and he's been able to travel and, and go into all these big gyms and meet a bunch of people you know, of all different walks of life. And uh, uh, hopefully, I'm hoping next week that we'll we'll be winning and maybe I'll miss his, uh, his tournament. But I was there for his first game. Tonight's tomorrow night be senior night. And I'm hoping that Murray will win long enough that I will be able to and win long enough that I'll be able to go and see them when they play whatever his last game is going to be. So very proud of him. Uh, we're all very proud and we're going to have a night of uh, excitement tomorrow and uh, uh, and watching him walk out of that tunnel and uh, uh, stand there and snap a picture with Coach Prom and, and, and that group and um, commemorate his, his, his basketball career coming to an end. 
No doubt, man. Well, I know you I know you'd be happy as heck. He's a lot of support here, of course. And so, so we're gonna we're sending you them good vibes for him as well. And like I said, I'll see you uh in Savannah next week with my brother. And I look forward to it, man. And I'll get him ready this week, brother. We do this again after after the tournament, brother. Fantastic. Can't wait. Can't wait. Folks, it's been the Sean Walker show here. Covering Allen basketball. Follow them at AU Men Basketball on Twitter.